Hi, I'm GNT and today I'm going to take you through the jab. This is the most frequently used hand technique in just about every martial art. It is faster and longer than most hand techniques. It is most likely to land, least likely to make you vulnerable, and therefore usually keeps you from having to trade punches. On top of that, it's known for being the range finder and the setup or the disguise for another technique. But don't be fooled by it being just that though, as this can produce enough power to cause significant damage. Before attempting this punch, movement is key to help with distancing, power and so on. Therefore, I'm going to break this down by stepping forwards into the jab. Main reason, it's fast, more powerful than a regular jab off the spot and it brings you into range. If you are unsure or need help with your fighting stance or basic movement, then click the videos or the links in the YouTube description. Okay, so before we throw the technique, I want you to lift your hands up so I can help you make a fist. Now, you may laugh, but over the years of my teaching, I've seen so many variations, so just in case, follow these steps. One, two, three. Now, see how the thumb is tucked underneath? This way it is safe. If it's out to the side, then it could go back and take the force, potentially lead into a fracture or dislocation. Same goes for it being kept inside your fist, so don't do that either. Now when you punch, you want to hit with the first two knuckles in. They are the biggest and the strongest, so it makes sense that they connect first to minimize damage in yourself when you strike. You also want to have your hand in line with your wrist. If your knuckles are pointing up, or down, then the pressure when you strike will travel to your wrist and it will damage or potentially even break it. The hand turning in and out from the straight alignment is also important for your safety. For perfect alignment and transfer of energy into your hand, you want to think of drawing a straight line from the two main striking knuckles all the way down the middle of your arm. Make sure you have good technique of this before you start to hit anything as the last thing you want to do when hitting something is to hurt yourself. Okay, now you know that, let's move on to the punch as a whole. When you start your punch, try not to pull it back as you will telegraph your technique as well as open up an area. Instead, work on going straight from your guard to your punch, combined with your movement to get you in range or in a position for your counter. Like I said earlier, in this we are going to do it with a basic step forwards in an orthodox stance. If you wish to do southpaw, it's exactly the same, just on the opposite side. Another common mistake is to lift the elbow as you are striking out. Some call it the chicken wing effect. This will also telegraph your technique and make your punches slower because it's not direct and less powerful, mainly due to less twist of the wrist as you impact. If you have this problem, jab next to a wall. This way, if you lift it out too much, you clip the wall and you can work on keeping it more direct so it's in line with your shoulder. As it travels, rotate your entire front arm so that your punch lands with the palm facing down. This adds the snap and more power to the punch as when you impact you can drive the punch in more with your shoulders and hips. Try to exhale as you strike. This will also help with power and will decrease the possibility of getting winded by a potential counter from your opponent. If we freeze on the strike you can see the alignment we went over earlier with the two knuckles leading the strike. The extra part you see is that the chin is tucked behind the shoulder so it is protected. It's important that you do this, but remember to bring your shoulder to your chin, not the other way around. This is because if we do get hit with a technique as we are doing the punch, i.e. an uppercut, we don't want to be putting our chin into this strike. The other hand should be up to protect you. Don't drop it as you will leave yourself open for a counter technique. The step completing as you punch puts your body weight into the technique, making it a lot stronger. Rather than just using your shoulder strength when you miss time or you don't step and drop into it. A common mistake for beginners is to straighten their legs as they punch. But this means you are less rooted, the punch lacks power and you can't move efficiently. Also, don't rotate your front foot. It's not wrong as it would become a left cross which is stronger but it lacks many of the jab's qualities like being more direct and easier to follow up from. Overreaching as you punch by leaning forwards with your head is another common mistake. You will be out of balance, decrease the right hand's power if it was to follow up, and you will struggle to move before you are hit with a counter due to more weight being on the front foot. After you have made impact, don't leave your arm out. 
Pull it straight back to your guard so you have full defense and are ready to protect yourself or strike again. If you are going to jab to the body, then you would bend your legs and drop down as you step forward so you don't over lean, you stay in balance and you keep your low center of gravity to move quickly. Right, so you have the basic principles of the jab. Now you can work on variations of it. You can do a short jab, a long jab, a power jab, a feint, a cross jab, and so on, with the main target areas being the nose, philtrum, chin, throat for life endangering situations, the solar plexus, the stomach, the ribs, or the groin. So it's down to you to train them, have them in your locker so you can combine them with your movements to use them in different situations and at the correct moments. Check out my basic footwork video if you would like extra guidance with your movement, and I will probably be making more advanced ones in the future to help as well. This concludes my tutorial on the jab. There will be a lot more self-defense tutorials coming soon, as well as keeping up with kicking, tricking, stretching tutorials, and so on. So don't miss out, subscribe if you haven't already, and like or follow me on these as well. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, thank you for your support, and good luck with your training.